All right, welcome back. So uh, we see this, we pick up where we stopped. Uh, the house filled with his glory. And here's the promise that God is giving to the prophet uh, Haggai. The glory of the latter temple will be greater than that of the former. Now, the glory of God. I think on Sunday, yesterday, we talked about stewarding God's glory uh, in God's presence. So what is the glory of God? The glory of God is an expression of who he is and what he does. Right? The glory of God is the manifestation of who God is and what he does. His, that we can see an expression of his, of God's invisible attributes. God's glory is revealed in many numerable, numerable ways. Uh, some of us, you know, when, when, we, when we pray, we may sense of peace in our heart. And that's the glory of God. When we pray and for people and they receive healing, it's God's glory manifested. That's who he is. He is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Right? God's glory can become a tangible experience in our lives in times of prayer and worship. Right? We must keep in mind that God will manifest his glory in many ways which we can probably not be aware of. Ultimately, the manifestation of God's glory points people to who he is and what he does. Right? So, as a local church, when, when you and I uh, get together for times of life group, prayer, worship, reading of the word, God can release his glory in different ways. But the point of releasing that glory is to reveal who God is and what he does. That's what Jesus also, right? He walked in such a, such a, in the sonship glory. Jesus did not do the miracles he did just because he had to do it. It was not like, okay, you know, uh, let me do some miracles. No. Jesus did those miracles because of who he is. He didn't do the miracles and say, that's who I am. You get what I'm saying, right? The miracles was an expression of who he is. It was a physical manifestation of the glory of God. Now, God promised that the glory of the latter days, latter, latter days will be greater than that of the former. That What does it teach us? This implies that God's glory is present, present among his people to the varied levels of God's glory. There are varied levels of his glory being manifested upon his people. For example, if you read in church history, you read the Scottish revival, you, uh, you read the, uh, the, the revivals that happened, the... Uh, uh, so I forget the name of that revival. Uh, uh, but when you read about these revivals, what is the difference there? And what is, what is happening there that, and what is happening like for us, example, right now? Why is it that people are you know, experiencing such high levels of you know, glory and God's power? Right? The reason is there are varied levels of God's glory. The more the, the more we pursue after God, the more the more we you know strain after having more for more of God, the more we will be able to see God's glory in our life. God desires to you know to release and manifest his glory. That's God's desire. But how much are we pressing on? That's a question that we must ask. Right. Uh, revivals in uh, you know in, in church history when we read them it was the glory of God being manifested at a higher realm right from the Garden of Eden all the way through the old covenant God was revealing his glory 
He chose the people of Israel as his chosen nation. Through the nation of Israel, he chose leaders. He used, he raised up great leaders, great men and women of God. He revealed the glory of God through them. God told Moses that he would wipe out the entire nation and start all over with Moses. At this point, Moses interceded for the people and the Lord agreed to pardon their guilt and their rebellion. God's heart reiterates God's intent. We may sin, we may turn away from God, but God's heart is, I want to release and manifest my glory upon these people. Right. Now, again, it is our, you see our responsibility there. Right. God is saying, I want to do it. But if, I, if you and I as a local church or a body, as a temple of God, we keep going to the things of the flesh or keep doing things in disobedience to God, what happens? God will have to restrain himself. But his desire is, I want to pour out my glory. Right? The church is the local church body today is part of a greater purpose of God to see the earth filled with the glory of God. The people among whom God dwells. The temple of God really is a place where God dwells. It is a place of his presence. It is a place where his glory is revealed. Uh, the psalmist writing in one, Psalms 132 says, For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. For here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation. Uh, and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There I will make the horn of David grow, meaning what? The descendants of David grow. I will prepare a lamb for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon himself his crown will flourish. What happens when we become a people among whom God dwells? He says, verse 15, I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her uh, for with bread. God is saying, I will abundantly bless. When you and I, you know, when you and I make God our dwelling place, God will abundantly bless. Meaning what? He, this, there will be a supernatural provision of prosperity and blessings in, into our life. God will supernaturally do it. Verse 16. I will clothe her priests with salvation and her saints shout aloud for joy. Number one, there will be supernatural provision and prosperity. God will supernaturally provide. He will make provisions. Remember when, when God filled, God gave uh, Moses the direction on what he has to do. But he also made provision for the people. He blessed the people of his fire. Verse 16 says, I will clothe her priests with salvation. Salvation, again, we know is a comprehensive word. The word sozo meaning forgiveness, healing, deliverance, victory. And he will clothe us with salvation. That means it's like a mantle. You put it on. He, will, he clothes us with that. So we have that. The word salvation, not just the born again experience, but it is forgiveness, healing, deliverance from sickness, diseases, from demonic works, and giving us victory in every area of our life. When we make the local church a house of prayer, there I will make, verse 17, I will make the horn of David grow. I will prepare a lamb for my anointed. There will be an incre continual increase of strength and dominion. The word, the word horn is strength and dominion. And we see that in the book of Revelations also. There is continual revelation. The lamp will continue to burn and burn and burn. We will see increase in strength. We will see in increase in dominion and revelation. And the things of God will just increase. 
I always say this, what we knew in 2000, you know, 20 years back, and as a church, what we know now is so much more. There is so much more revelation. And what we know now to 10 years down the line, in the next decade will be so much more because there'll be greater revelations. This is God's promise. He said, I will, when my glory comes, it will be greater than that of the latter, and it will reveal, and I will, I will increase you in, in wisdom and revelation. Verse 18, his enemies I will clothe with shame, but upon himself his crown will flourish. We triumph over our enemies and continue to increase and flourish and blossom as his people. In all of these seven promises, God says, I will. He doesn't say, I may. There is no criteria. This is what God wants to do. This is what God desires to do as or towards the local church, towards the local church community, among the unsaved, among the ungodly. He wants to bring the glory of God upon their lives, that their lives change and they come back to God. And when, when we come back to God, when we turn back and we say, God, this is who you are, and I want to see your glory. I want to see your presence uh, now, uh, and your glory manifested in, my, in, our, in our lives, in the local church. The Bible says he will do all of these. He will. So when God's glory is seen upon us, Isaiah 60 uh, is powerful. What is the outcome? And we talked about it, strength, dominion, wisdom, deliverance, sozo, salvation, all of this is there. What are the other things that come when, uh, you know, if, think of this. When God's glory comes, there is an obvious manifestation. Sometimes we don't need to lay hands and pray. Sometimes we don't even have to say anything. There are healings, there are deliverances. But Isaiah 60 uh, talks about this. Now, if you read the book of Isaiah carefully, it's a powerful book. I would encourage you as students, read the book of Isaiah. It's like a mini Bible. It is a powerful book. Isaiah is writing in the time of captivity. He's saying, these are the things you have been doing wrong, but God is going to send a savior. Out of the root of Jesse will come somebody. Yet you have still will sin. There will be darkness around you. You are right now, you know, Isaiah is writing and he's saying, as a nation of Israel, you are right now living in darkness. You're living in captivity, living in darkness. Even though you're in captivity, you're still following the, you know, your worshipping other gods you're not turning your face towards the god of israel but here's the promise in isaiah 60 where god is speaking to the prophet and he says okay most of the people in the nation of israel you're all gloomy and sad and weary and you have no idea what is happening but the glory of the lord will arise so isaiah said arise shine for your light has come the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness covers the earth and deep darkness the people. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. What a powerful, powerful word. Now think of this. If you and I were in a place of captivity, right, away from our home, under bondage, under Assyrian rule, being afflicted, no freedom there's no you know there's, there's no uh, hope for any success or hope for, uh, or light in the other side of the tunnel there's just a feeling of unrest and now you open this portion of scripture and you say arise and shine god is saying arise and shine don't worry forget about arise he's saying god is saying arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. God again repeats the fact that his glory will be revealed on his people, even though the people of Israel. Now he's talking, uh, he's, he's talking for the now at the time when 
uh, he was writing it for the people of Israel, but he's also talking about it prophetically, saying, I will glorify the house of my glory. Because he has glorified you, I will make the place of my feet glorious. The Lord will be to you an everlasting light and your God, your glory. The whole chapter, he's only talking about glory, glory, and glory. Signs, wonders, and miracles reveal the glory of God. John chapter 1, 14, and the word of God, the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Think of this. We are called to walk in the sonship glory. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Every time, in the first miracle, Jesus changed the water into wine. He began his ministry showing forth his glory. When Jesus walked on the water, he showed forth his glory. When he healed the sick, he showed forth his glory. When demons came trembling and fell at his feet, they saw his glory. Everywhere, every place that Jesus walked in, his glory was dispensed. Think of this. The book of Isaiah says, Jesus, there was no beauty in him that they had to beheld him. Meaning there was no, there was no physical, it was not like Jesus looked as a beautiful person. No, just a normal person. Now, uh, I was sharing this yesterday at church. Think of this, this, this young boy, Jesus, five years old, 10 years old, growing among all the other kids, doing everything the other kids were doing. He's 15 years old, young man, helping out his father probably, or helping out in the business. 20 years old, he's got his other brothers with him. 25, young, growing, you know. And then suddenly when you're 30, you say, I'm the Messiah. That's why the brothers themselves were confused. They said, what are you talking about? We played marbles together, and you're saying you're the Messiah. And his brothers and sisters said, this guy is off. He doesn't know what he's talking about. But he, when John the Baptist baptizes him, and Andrew, the disciple, sees Jesus, and so, John the Baptist says, Behold, the Son of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Andrew goes up to Jesus and says, Jesus, where do you live? Jesus says, Come and see. If you read through the whole scripture, uh, they go to Jesus' house, they come out, they knew he was the Messiah. So much so that Andrew went searching for Peter, his brother, and said, Peter, it found the Messiah. What was it? There's no account of any miracle that he did there there was no nothing about his you know he was probably wearing the same thing what jewish people wear during those times a tunic or coat nothing nothing too fancy he didn't wear a crown and a robe and a no just a normal person what was it that people were ready to follow this man jesus think of matthew the tax collector no, as a tax collector, he had all the benefits, almost all the benefits a Roman citizen would have. Number one, he doesn't have to pay taxes. Two, he gets he gets protection from the Roman government. Three, he's given a lot of facility. They are rich people, tax collectors. Jesus said to Matthew, leave what you're doing and follow me. Matthew left everything in the drop of a hat and followed this man, Jesus. Why? Because. They saw the glory of God, not only in his miracles, but probably even in his words, the way he spoke, they saw there was something different about him. But they followed him. That is a sonship glory, and you and I walk in that sonship glory. Now, I'm not saying we must we will reach, you know, we are like Jesus, like Jesus walking on that level, we, but we can grow into that level. We have that sonship glory, but we have to get into that level. We have to walk, desire to walk in that level. Powerful. There's nothing about Jesus that, you know, 
I always think to myself, what if I was there around? I'm seeing Jesus when he was 10 years old, 15 years old. We played together, and all of a sudden you say, I'm the Messiah. It was not until Jesus died, he resurrected from the dead, and his brothers believed in him. Because his brothers saw him and said, hey, you died right in front of our eyes. You were crucified. But now you're alive. So you are who you said you are. You are the Messiah. They forgot about all the miracles. You came back to life. So you are the Messiah. Right? So that's powerful. We walk in that kind of a sunship glory. We, you know, we may be going to our workplaces or starting our own businesses, starting our own churches. We will have to interact with people outside, maybe unbelievers, people from other faiths. We can pray and say, Lord, let the glory of God be revealed in my life that will impact and touch other people's lives. But sadly, in the Old Testament, we see that the glory departs. We see that at times the glory of God was no longer among the people of God. During the time of Eli, the priest, the Israel, Israel had defeated the Philistines. The two sons of Eli were, were dead and the ark of, the, of God had been captured. The glory departed. When again, the prophet Ezekiel prophesied and he says, when God stands outside of the temple, meaning I will leave this place. God refused to be in the temple. Now, remember this, Ezekiel is prophesying during a time of Israel's 70 year captivity. If you read about the book of Ezekiel, it is a, he was a strange man. God told him, you sleep on your left side. That's the number of days you'll be in captivity. Sleep on your right side. This is the number of days you'll be in captivity. Make a big hole in the wall in your house. That's because the people have disobeyed God. Right? Take a frying pan, put it in front of your face, and walk around the city. And when people ask you, they'll say, they'll ask you, what are you doing now? Then you tell them, this is how you have, uh, you know, the the... You have blinded yourself from things of God. Ezekiel says later on, chapter 8, he says, Now turn again. And you will, meaning he's saying, The God of glory has stepped out, has moved out of the temple. The more the nation of Israel keeps sinning, keeps defiling God, keeps defying the ways of God, being disobedient to God, I will step out. Right? But again, towards the end, Ezekiel writes about the future temple. Chapter 40 onwards, he says, 43, 4 through 7, uh, in, the, in this vision, the new temple, God is showing the restoration. The early chapter of Ezekiel, the glory of God departs. Then God is standing outside of the temple as a, as a picture of, I'm not going to enter till you make things right. Now God is speaking through the prophet Ezekiel and saying, listen, I'm going to make this temple back to where it was. I'm going to restore his, the glory of God in the temple. Let's read 44 and verse 4. And also he brought me by, by way of the north gate in front of the temple. So I looked and beheld. Behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house of the Lord, and I fell at my feet. Fell on my face. Now, Ezekiel is painting a, such a wonderful picture. Saying, I will fill the first Ezekiel is saying, God is gonna God has departed. And he's saying God is waiting out. And he's ending that book in the prophecy, saying. God is going to fill this temple. And he did fill the temple with his glory. The glory of the Lord filled the house and Ezekiel fell at his feet or fell, at, or fell on his face. All this reveals God's heart for his people. You know, many times when we read this, we may see that why is God so angry? Why is God so upset? No, he's not. He's, he is a good God. He is a loving God. 
but he's also a holy God. Yes, he loves us, but he's holy. So he needs to make things right. But the end, we see that he desires to send his glory, and he does it. You and I, the local church or the body of believers, are, are referred to as his temple. And as a temple in the New Testament, uh, his glory is filled in our lives. It is a place where God dwells in, in the midst of his people. The local in the local church, God fills his glory. The church is the temple of God. Right? Matthew 18 20 says it so wonderfully. For where there are two or three gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. As part of the local church, assembled together, we can we will see it is the dwelling place of God. And it is a place where God will begin to reveal and release his glory. Ephesians 2, 19 onwards says, Now therefore you are no longer strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household, being built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God and God in the Spirit. So what is our responsibility? Now we know that the church, you and I, the early church, is a prototype, a sample of what God wants to do. Every church in our city, in our nation, and across the world, God wants to fill with his glory. He wants to do it. But there's a responsibility from our end. We are to keep the temple holy. The local church. We have to keep the local church, the temple of God, holy. How can we do that? We Very important. Remember, God is writing, Paul is writing to the Corinthians and he's saying, see, it's wonderful that you guys are, you know, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit and all of those things. But he says, why is there division among you? Why is there confusion? Why is there, uh, you know, there, there's, he's, he's admonishing the church. He's saying, you ask God, be holy, be pure. Your motives are not right as a church. You have the gifts. You have, you know, speaking in tongues, prophecies, word of knowledge. You have these wonderful gifts, but your motives are not right. Keep your motives right. Be holy. So he's exhorting the church there. How can you and I implement this? How can we keep the church, the local church, holy? One, impart an understanding that both individually and corporately we are the temple of God. Very important. Example, individually, I'm the temple of God. So I may have certain problems, certain challenges. Now, an outcome of those problems and challenges, I shouldn't go to the local church and start, you know, start, of course, I can go and get counseling, get help for my problem, but I should not take it in a wrong way and start ridiculing people, causing strife, walking in arrogance, walking in pride. I must avoid that. So I, I'm a temple of God individually. Then I must also look at the local church corporately. We are the temple of God. So I do my best to keep my part. And as leaders, we, we do our best to make sure that the local church is able to understand that we need to be holy, set apart for God. Right? Uh, impart an understanding of what we must expect as we become a habitation, his dwelling place. So what are the what can we expect we can expect god's holiness god's purity god's power god's uh you know healing and deliverance and uh, we expect and empower and equip believers to manifest the glory of god and when his glory comes we can expect so much more what uh what we what no eye has seen 
what no ear has heard, what mind has not conceived. We can expect such great things from God. So we teach it to our people. We teach our church. Some of the challenges to be prepared for. We can drive ourselves into dead religion, having forms of godliness without the power. It's very important. Right? Now, remember the Old Testament church? The Old Testament, they were... You know, they were just doing something. They were doing all those offerings and the guilt offering, the pain offering, all of those offerings. They were doing it. But there was a point when they didn't know why they were doing it. 400 years of silence, they were just doing it. When John the Baptist comes and he says, listen, you, you people are putting your faith in Abraham. God can raise up Abraham from these stones. Don't put your faith on that. It was dead religious activities that they were doing. It was a form of godliness. Now, the form of godliness, Paul writes plenty about it um, in his letters. It's not godliness. It's a form of godliness. Now, we want to be careful, right? When we, as a local church, are praying and worshipping God, we're believing God for things to happen, uh, we had to keep Maintain that, hey, whatever we are doing is for God's glory. Whatever miracles are the manifestation of his glory, the glory goes back to God. God is not going to share his glory with the others, with anyone else. So we don't know, you know manufacture things on our own and point to God's glory. Nothing's going to happen. It becomes a form of godliness. And two, we must always operate our understanding that that the work has already been done that we are striving to live out of what christ has already done here's the interesting part in the old covenant they had to do a lot of things and i'm sure we know this right we had the, the old covenant they had to do a lot of things there were a lot of offerings a lot of uh, practices that had to be done and God himself says, when you do all of this, example, the Day of Atonement, once you do all the necessary practices and the religious things that need to be done, then I will forgive the nation of Israel. There's a lot of works to be done. The high priest, uh, the prayers, uh, the guilt offering, the sin offering. Only after all of this, they felt there was no assurance felt that there was forgiveness of sins and God has forgiven them. After the cross, you and I are living out of a finished work. God, we are the temple of God. We have the glory of God. We must have the, well, we must not have, you know, an incorrect understanding. We are not coming. We are not doing things out of work. We're doing everything out of the finished work of the cross. God has already done the work, and we're living out of that. Now, doesn't mean that God has already done it, and so we don't do anything more. Yes, we don't have to do anything more in terms of our, our, uh, you know, our, our, our sins being forgiven. We don't have to do anything more. The price has already been paid. Sin has been dealt with. But we have to do our part of praying and seeking God. Right? Now, it's not a... If I pray, read the word, and I do all of these things, it's not works. It's my intimacy, our intimacy with God that begins to release and manifest the, the glory of God. Right? So we must put the right understanding, teach people, if we're not striving for something uh, like how the Old Testament folks did, we are working on the basis of the finished work of the cross. right? And that's where our identity is. So this is chapter 14. We talked about the temple of God. Two aspects, right? Very important. Just to summarize this chapter. There's the aspect of the, the local church being corporately being the body of the temple of god and the aspect of individually as you and i as believers being the 
temple of God. So they both are interchangeable. They both are important. Right? Um, but when God looks at the local church as a whole, he has promised, I will fill the church, the, I will fill my temple. The, the glory of the latter will be greater than that of the former. So this is God's promise. We've got to teach people. We've got to encourage people. Now, there will be a time more and more churches will be planted. More and more revelations will happen. More and more you know, people will start growing in, into the greater things of God. Right? Um, churches are going to continue no matter what. So we got to keep teaching this. we got to keep encouraging our folks. Small churches, big churches. Encourage them, teach them, and help them to grow. Right. So the next aspect is the local church. Uh, uh, that is Zion, God's chosen people. And what we'll do is we'll stop here. We covered quite a lot. Uh, uh, but we'll pick up from this chapter next class onwards. Um, so the next class is... Uh, ministry of the Evangelist, Pastor and Teacher. So I just want to request you if I can please be excused for that class. Uh, just maybe you can take some time and study. And next, or I think our next class will be on Friday for Ministry of the Evangelist, Pastor and Teacher. We just need another two more classes for that. Uh, we look at the rewards. We are looking at the rewards, sorry, responsibilities of the pastor and then we look at the rewards and then we will wrap up that course as well so uh, please use this time to study uh, take your breaks uh, use this time to study please sit in your classrooms uh, sit and study and then we will catch up on friday for uh, ministry of the evangelist pastor and teacher hope that's all right and okay anyone like to close with prayer i know i've been talking the whole time. Anyone like to close in prayer, please? Blessy, would you like to close in prayer? Yes, anyone can close, please. Father God, thank you, Lord, for this time, Lord, as whatever we have heard, Lord, whatever we have learned, Lord, help us to, Lord, help, help us to, Lord, uh, the follow all these things about the local church that, Lord, I pray, Lord, to a lot, uh, the desire, Lord, I think, uh, Can I pray? Yes, Pastor? go ahead, Gertrude. Go ahead. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the time that you gave us to study your word, to know about the local church, about your temple, my master, your holiness and purity, and how to grow in it, my master, Lord, that whatever you're teaching us, master, Lord, that we will dwell on it, my master, learn your word and perform it in our lives, my master, Lord. Thank you for pastor taking so much time to explain to us all these chapters. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. I'll see you.